This video is intended to help teachers who are interested in doing the tiny house thermal energy project. So I've created a po project page on my website. So my website is rebeccanewburn.com. So it's just my first name and last name.com. Uh, we put ours under a thermal energy unit in sixth grade as kind of a precursor to our unit on weather. But this project would really work great in like a maker class as well. So if you go to the sixth grade unit, and then you go to, sorry, go to um, Unit 2, Thermal Energy. So we have a whole bunch of just resources in general. So we had our task that they were working on was you're a team of architects and need to design a home to maximize thermal efficiency. Um, and so their big aha was how can you, how can your home minimize uh, thermal energy loss? We have kind of whatever, just enduring understanding, vocabulary. Um, kind of home connections where they can make solar ovens and then just all the lessons. So that's kind of the precursor in terms of all the background we did before we got to the actual engineering task. Um, because there were a lot of resources with the engineering task, I created it as its own unit page, or not its own unit page, its own project page. So if you, once again, if you go back to sixth grade, sixth grade units, and you go to thermal energy, then out comes a pop out, which is unit two, tiny house project. So once again, here is the engineering task, um, your team of architects, um, vocabulary. A lot of this is built into the readings that we have. We have leveled readings um, that we've created or whatever we've taken readings that we found and then kind of adapted for an on level, accommodated and modified. So we're still working the process of doing that, but all of our readings are transitioning over to having three um, levels to increase access for our students. So kind of the final product is they're going to be creating this house and it's a tiny house. So it's a, it's a model of a, what would be a tiny house. So it's a tiny, tiny house. Um, and we actually um, purchased a FLIR one thermal energy device, which actually authentically gives, <coughs> sorry, a reading of the, um, <coughs> the heat when we put it under on a lamp. Um, as opposed to just kind of a cool, you know, gadget that makes it, you know, look like it's actually doing a reading, but it is indeed actually doing a reading. Um, so this was a first, obviously, pretty big expense. This project definitely has some costs associated with it, but as we've done it, this is my second year doing the project. We, like next year, our costs are going to be like psh, nothing. Not nothing, but significantly lower, and I'll explain what I did to get there. Um, so what we basically do is we have a... Um, just like a planning, original planning day. I was actually grading at this point, so that's kind of part of it. So I get a long video of just intro. So they have team contracts um, that they sign. And within the team contracts, let me actually pull it up because it's actually kind of useful. Of course it's useful because I, <laughs> why would I do anything that isn't useful for my students? Um, basically, they have to kind of, um, they have a principal architect, a foreman, a project manager, and a master carpenter. So that kind of helps, um, with the decision-making process and kind of distributing workloads. Um, and then also I have a thing with work ethic where they should all, if they do an equal amount of work, would get the team grade. And if they don't, they can kind of adjust points up or down um, at the end. So that's a, a little thing that I do. But they all sign off on this contract to begin with. Um, and then we talk about lead certification. So right when we start off, oh, and here's the team contract that they made a copy with and all that. Um, so with this project, so with this project, I have like slideshows for everything just kind of helps me keep organized and also if kids are absent, they can, they can follow along. Um, so they have this tiny home planning sheet and we have a lot of criteria. So we talk a lot about like what are criteria and then also what are um, constraints. So we have these, we bought these basswoods, which are like 12 inch long sticks. They were super pricey. Um, so like the first year this project was, was, was a chunk of change. Um, but what we did was we actually, and here's the planning sheet. Um, so here's all the specifications, um, and kind of what we did this year was we were like, okay, how can we 
have some good data, but also not completely spend so much time because we could spend days on this project. We did spend days on this project, but we could spend much longer than we did. Um, so kind of the the way that we kind of thought about this design process was that they're going to build a house and that the four sides are going to have different aspects to them. So for example, one one side of the house will have no insulation and will also have no windows or doors. So that was our control. And then we kind of decided that we would have the side across from that that had no insulation, no windows, would also have no insulation, but would have like a door or a window. And then the two opposite sides, so like east and west, uninsulated, one has a window or a door, the other one has nothing and is the control. And then the north and the south sides would be um, the ones that are insulated. And they got to choose what type of insulating material they wanted to do. Um, so let me kind of go through that. So once again, they had some choices. One was to actually have the same insulating material and really evaluate how does a single layer of material versus a double layer of the same material, how does that impact its ability to insulate? And then the other one was, um, or they could do two different insulating materials. So the north side could have been wool batting and then the south side it could have been newspaper. Um, so they had choices in terms of insulating. Um, one of the things we also kind of had them do was put the house in context so they could decide on where they wanted to have their house. And we talked a little bit about how design, how location should impact design if people are, you know, actually really being mindful of energy and climate and um, sun and things like that. So we we had a conversation about that. And this is also these designs, we go a little bit more into it on the resource sheet so they can look at that and kind of get a little bit more information um, with regards to that. Uh, then we kind of move into the rough design sketch. So they all kind of do just a really rough sketch and decide, oh, these this is the one that's going to be the control and this is also going to be the uninsulated side or, you know, or these two, whatever. Um, and they do out their little measurements here. And then I picked because it's sixth grade and they have not actually got to scale drawing yet. I made a very simple scale of one inch equals two feet. And then what made that nice was their actual building was the same size as their actual drawing. So it was easy for me to kind of see if they were going to be off or on. Um, so let's see what other things I want to say. And then they also had the option of being LEED certified. So we talked about what is LEED certification um, in terms of it being a green building design process. And then just like with uh, LEED certification, you can get um, certified on lead, silver, gold, or platinum. And so how we did that was based on the amount of reused materials that they had. So obviously the first year I didn't, whatever, I was just kind of creating these pieces. But then this year I was able to actually, we salvaged a lot of the lumber from last year. And then they were able to use that salvaged lumber in their design. And then of course, most kids wanted to do platinum. So meant basically everyone was using reused lumber, which made it a lot cheaper project, but it also kind of embedded a more realistic um, aspect to the project. Um, let's see. And then on the sheet, eventually they will do, they're going to do it before and after insulation um, of the side. So basically they're going to determine, they have to figure out what is going to be a good place to measure. Um, so we were originally trying to do, we were thinking this year of like, oh, let's do it in the center of you know, each side to so just find the midpoint of each side and do it there. But sometimes that was a door and sometimes that was a window. So we had to rethink that and just have them decide what was going to be a consistent place. Um, so they would be getting a solid, you know, a solid wall versus a window in some places and a wall in other places. Um, so we did, we decided to go with Fahrenheit just because I think that our values for insulation is more based on Fahrenheit. Obviously, you could totally switch it up, but that was just kind of our thinking on using Fahrenheit instead of instead of um, Celsius for this project. Um, another piece that I really liked about the way we designed this project is they had a budget. Now that we're doing all the lead certified, we might actually change the budget. The fifteen thousand, everyone can pretty much make it under the fifteen thousand. Um, but they also one thing I really appreciate about the way that, that I designed this was they get. Um, they can get fines for failure to clean up. 
So that goes off of their budget. So then they're really kind of meticulous about cleaning up after themselves when they're, you know, each day. Um, oh, and then I also wanted to say, sorry, going back to the top. So basically they create their rough sketch. And then for homework, I have a video that actually walks them through how to do a blueprint. Um, and once again, they have a master uh, principal architect who also kind of helps to oversee the, um, the blueprints. Um, for most of these, they're going to need more than one sheet of paper. Um, the main thing is that you really need to make sure that our, our heat lamps were nine inches. Well, they were like eight, the, the actual lamps were yeah, about eight or nine inches. So their house had to be at least nine inches in, um, the, the base had to be at least nine inches. So one year, the first year I did not catch it with one group and, um, it was a complete disaster in terms of their data. Um, so be aware of that. And then what else did I want to say? Oh, the other thing is once they get their, <laughs> once they do their blueprints, they have to get them approved by the city so that I'm the city, or I also have parents come in and help for this part. Um, and so what happens there is being the city, I approve their, I approve their designs. It, it's pretty easy. You just put the South side and the North side together and see, do they roughly match and do a couple of measurements? Um, and same thing with the east and the west. And then once I've approved their drawing and I've made sure that they've met the criteria, then I give them a building permit. So I have this cute little building permit and they can only build if they have the building permit out. And if their building permit isn't visible, they also get a fine. So um, <laughs> just some nice little life lessons in there. Uh, let's see other things. So it just talks a little bit more of the design awards, talk about the testing method. Uh, we ended up using really large heat, the, the nine inch heat lamps, but we also had the really big bulbs and that was, we we're not going to do that again. One, because one house was really short and fortunately I used, I only used natural insulation, um, but it literally burned like it started smoldering. Um, so that was, that was something to learn. So, and also just their numbers were a bit too dramatic compared to what would be a real house. So next year we're going to use the heat lamps but we're going to use like a 120 bulb instead of, um, you know, more of like an incubator bulb, which is what those came with when we purchased those, those heat lamps. And then in the end, um, what they'll do is they'll write a government, they'll write a group report. That's kind of basically a marketing report just about the, or I don't know if it's marketing, but it was their team of architects, basically what recommendations would they have, what evidence supports that. And so it's basically a claim evidence reason, but more in a format that meets you know, the specifications of this project. So that's kind of an overview. Let me see, let me go back to the actual project page and see what other things I want to kind of pull out. Um, Cause it's a lot to navigate and I just felt like a little video might help support that. So unit two, tiny house. Um, so pretty much I have PowerPoints for like all of those um, just to kind of walk through what we need to do and also just kind of a time frame. So I kind of say, you know, they, you really have to be on them, which is like, you guys need to plan your day out. You need to, you're paying for every, all the labor. And so when someone's sitting around and not doing anything, like two people should be building, two people should be cutting out insulation. I pre-cut the insulation. So I just did wool batting and um, cotton. I decided not to use any of the foams or anything like that that my, my, um, other sixth grade teacher did just cause I don't believe in creating plastic waste, um, as much as I can avoid it. So what I did was I was, I was like, I'm going to have mostly, you know, 10 inch walls and 11 inch walls and 12 inch walls. So I just took a long ruler and a marker and I just like got some nice fabric scissors, not nice. I wouldn't say they're nice at all. They were like four for $8, but I bought, I bought a bunch of fabric scissors and I pre-cut strips of those and then kids could buy them from the 10 inch, the 11 inch or the 12 inch piles of wool batting or cotton batting. And so it just facilitated the movement of, of, of resources really quickly out and then stuff was returned in good shape. And then at the end, when we broke everything down, we dismantled the houses, you know, things came back and we were able to recover and salvage a lot more material. So I was super excited about that. And then the last thing I wanted to show was the budget. So we have a planning sheet. That's what I was just walking you through. And then we have this budget sheet. Um, you'll have to decide what works for you. I personally made copies for like every single group and I created just a, 
a Google sheet. I'm sorry, I don't have it up, but I had a Google sheet that was just like period one with the people's names. And then here's the copy.